This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what my Bible says I, I am. I am what my Bible says I am. I can do what my Bible says. I told me to count it all joy when I fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, the trying of my patience, uh, work of patience, the trying of my faith, work of patience, that patience, have its perfect work. You don't wait to see what's going on. You make the power. You make, you what's, gonna make happen. what's going to happen. You make it because you're an engineer for that. Your life. Persecuted the Christians until he became one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why? Because you know, in order for you to grow, you got to go on to the incline. You got to go upward. You got to keep moving despite how you be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. All right. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to training camp. Uh, we're going to wait and see who's coming on with us. Pastor Linda, you want to greet the people? Hello, people. Hello, people. God, how is everyone doing tonight? We are right here back on training camp. Yes, Welcome, we everyone. Show us some hearts and love. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you are in the training camp room on tonight, we are excited. We are climbing the ladder. Of course, we started last week on a new series, right. and uh, it was just absolutely phenomenal. And uh, we're going to pick back up um, and so on tonight. So I do just have one announcement that I would like to uh, make mention to you, and that is the uh, Apostle to... Affirmation uh, inf uh, Apostle Affirmation Information. Uh, let's see. I think he's trying to I'm get trying on. to see who is on with us. All right. There so we we'll go. know if we have enough people for you to start these announcements. I am looking. Okay. We have Juanetta Carter, Deborah Vasquez, Deborah Sanchez, Cassandra Thunderpool, uh, Elder White, Wanda White, Teresa Henderson, Charlotte Pollitt, Juanita Carter, Lynn Chapel. Chappell, uh, Darlene Underwood, Tracy Anderson, Kevin Jones. So it's 26. You want to give those announcements? Yeah, we only have just one. And um, and so uh, we'll talk about that for a few moments and uh, allow people to come on. on. Um, unless you want to talk about something else before I go into the announcements. Well, we had a great town hall meeting. Yep, we did. And we had stellar attendance. I mm -hmm. want to say thank you to all those who attended the town hall meeting and made it a success. A lot of information was downloaded to you. Mm -hmm. And um, we're expecting to have a really supernatural time at the inauguration of the affirmation of Apostle Fred L. Hodge Jr. It's going to be wonderful. So. Uh, we want everybody to be a part, every member, every partner, our guests and friends to show up in abundance because it's a one in a lifetime affair. It will not reoccur, come back. You won't be able to go dig it up. <laughs> this is the one and only. So we want everybody to get this information. If you have questions, call my office. My staff is standing by. They can answer any question that you have. We're doing constant updates in our, uh, our uh, website. Mm -hmm. Also, we're having prep meetings all the time. You got to go to your meeting, attend your meetings. So you'll absolutely be in the know and you can show up and glow in the affirmation. So <laughs> let's go ahead with all the right. announcements, Pastor Lynn. All right. So we just basically have that one announcement, of course, and he just already talked about it and gave you some information and some things to look forward to. And so the registration, of course, is open for the affirmation service. Make sure you go to our LPCC website, click Apostle Affirmed Hodge to register and receive all of the updates. Also, uh, Sunday, September 11th, um, of course, only there will be only one service that, that Sunday morning, which is 1130 service. Therefore, there will not be a service uh, in Palmdale. It would basically be at... Um, the sun and that is as i mentioned at 11 30 and of course all this information is 
on uh, the website. So all you need to do is just go to the website to get all of the information. And then of course, Sunday evening affirmation, um, just to remind you that uh, if you haven't registered, you wanna go ahead and register for that, that's at six o'clock. And then of course, the uh, Friday night, which is our celebration party, um, that information is on there as well. I believe you have something to the 20th, something like to the 20th or so to register for that and to get your monies in for that. Um, uh, there it is right there. Just go to lpccglobal.com for full registration information. So we are constantly updating it as things occur, as things begin to take place. Um, I will give you a heads up for those that's on tonight, many um, I think was inquiring uh, regarding the children's church on Sunday morning at 11.30 service. Um, so it's looking like we will be providing uh, children's church on that Sunday, and that is for the 11.30 service, okay? That information will be put on the website as well. I'm just kind of giving you a uh, heads up. So well, those are all of the announcements that we want to make mention, of course, at the end of, at the end of uh, our training camp tonight, of course, um, there, there is some more reminders of the upcoming uh, events that's going to be taking place. So, all right. Well, are you guys ready for tonight training camp, climbing, climbing the ladder? Let's see who else have joined us. I see Renard Vine is with us. John David is with us as well. All right, Elder John, uh, George Wright is with us. Kish is with us. Uh, Helen Mason, Alan is with us. Uh, Jasmine is with us. Clinton Lewis Jr., Gracie Vine, Johnny Monroe, Willa Robinson, uh, Kelly Johnson. All right, Pastor Bell, Eddie Collins. All right, Tony uh, Johnson. All right, we see you, Rodney Stearns. Uh, all right, all right. Good to see you, sir. He said he is back in California. Good awesome. to see you. Yeah, good to Welcome have you back. back. Home. Right. So uh, that is it for now. Let's see. All right. I think we are good to go. Are oh, we good to go, Pastor mm -hmm. Linda? All right. Well, let's get into this word tonight. Let's make our confession. Father, we come and say thank you for a time around the word of God. It's been fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He downloads into us what we need to walk in the high places of God. We thank you now that my wife and I will use tonight as vessels of clay. You, Holy Spirit, will use our mind, mouth, and heart to minister the accuracy of our Father's ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say it with me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what my Bible says I am. I am what my Bible says I am. I can do what my Bible says I can do. I can do what my Bible says I can I do. I have absolutely I everything. have absolutely everything. My Bible says I my have. My Bible says I am. I am a believer. I am a believer. Not a doubt. Not a doubt. For faith comes by faith hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing. And hearing. And hearing by. And hearing by. The word of God. The word of God. And my life is the better. And my life is the better. After having heard. After having heard. The word of faith. The word of faith. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting out with uh, our scripture. We're going to uh, go to Romans 1, 16. Scripture says, uh, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, look at this scripture because it's, it's talking about your progressive progressive maturation as you traverse uh, the earth uh, uh, within the kingdom of God. So it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because in the gospel, the righteousness, right standing, justification with God is revealed from faith to faith. So all of these particulars about my uh, my justification uh, by faith in God, what I own, what is my inheritance, uh, what am I able to do, all my liberties, my promises are revealed from level of faith to level of faith. And we know this to be true because uh, Paul taught the Roman church and also it was for us that we are to renew our minds daily with the word of God so we can know what the will of God is for each one of us as we grow uh, uh, in, in the things of God and grow in our Christianity. 
So when we look at the revelation, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So it is progressive. You have to understand that. Uh, yes, every man has been given a measure of faith. That's the beginning point. But as you use faith, you increase faith. And you begin to grow in it. And it, it begins to open up things that you did not know uh, at, this, at, that, at, at another level. When you first started, it was a low level. As you use it, you begin to climb in levels of faith. And there's things that come along with increased faith that you did not have when you begin. So it's progressive. It's not a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, you get a measure of faith and that's all. No, as you use your faith, you increase your capacity to believe. So we continually grow in faith from one level to another level. So as you grow, you go to another level in faith. It's a step-by-step -step process. Now we, we talk, taught you this so that you can understand what it meant, our title, Climb the Ladder. The power to define is the power to determine destiny. So when the Holy Spirit is downloading into us all this year about ascending, about upgrading, about uh, uh, coming up, coming out, we have to understand the message that he's given to us, that this thing is progressive and we must be on target with our effort in order to experience the upgrade. So when we define the word ladder, a ladder is a device with rungs that allow people to climb to a higher place uh, uh, to get to something they want to reach, get to an objective. So that's what a ladder is. It gives you the ability to go up. Yeah. When we say climb up, that means to go up or to ascend, especially by using your hands and your feet. And, and, and I'm going to talk about that next week, about that focus and how you have to be stable as you begin to move up. Now, to rise slowly or as if... Uh, to have a continued effort. So uh, last week we talked about this ladder, destiny progression ladder. And I'm gonna just have Pastor Linda just go through, she can just name the words because we were reminding you of this so we can get in on the next second uh, application of this lesson today. So, All right, so those words was purpose, preparation, planning, predetermination, positioning, Proving progression. So those okay. were the words. Those were the words. Those were the prongs on the ladder that help us to go up. Okay. So the scripture revealed that productivity is rewarded with increased capacity. When you look at stewards, when one steward had three talents, he used the talent and increased his capacity. He was given three other talents. And so we understand with use, we increase. So when you work with what you have, God gives you more to work with. Mm -hmm. So you, you must study the stewardship principle mm -hmm. so you understand how elevation takes place, okay? Now, understanding this concept is easy when we look at it from a corporate viewpoint. Mm -hmm. In corporate, it means to move up. When we climb the ladder, mm -hmm. it means to move up in the hierarchy of a corporation. Mm -hmm. A ladder is a device with steps used to climb or move up and down. So the corporate ladder is the series of steps people go through as they gain more power in a corporation and rise to the top from a file clerk even up to the presidency. You have to work very hard if you want to climb the corporate ladder. Mm -hmm. So when we uh, process what it means to climb the ladder, the conclusion is the same. Mm -hmm. We are climbing the ladder to success. Mm -hmm. Now, Pastor Linda, what does that, 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 that ladder represent? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it represents a series of steps or stages, you could call it, that leads to a higher position or better position. Okay, you said something right there mm -hmm. before you continue. Mm -hmm. We are climbing the ladder of success because it puts us in another place, in another position. Mm -hmm. See, there's an election of God. When, when we start off with these callings, callings, obedient to the calling, leads you up the ladder to election, mm -hmm. to your most fruitful uh, productivity in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But you have to climb 
the, the rings because you need foundations set. You're building uh, one block upon right. the right. other. Right. So continue, right. Pastor Lee. So the higher you go on the ladder, the greater viewpoint you have. Oh, Lord. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you see things that others do not see. See, yeah, you know yeah. things that others do not know. Yep. You are actually exposed to things others are not exposed to. Wow. So that lets me know that the higher I get, the more accountability or the or the more commitment and more responsibility that I must possess. Right. Right. So as I climb up, even like as he was talking about in corporate America, as you climb up, even in your job, there are greater responsibilities that is attached to your new position. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, you know, not only great responsibility, but greater pay, greater pay, greater pay and and oversight. (laughs) And so (laughs) you should be able to see things more clearly and have a wider perspective of the view of what's going on in the company, because you are supposed to know how the company operates you are you are to know the various positions that people hold and so you are seeing from a higher perspective and many times a clear view and yeah. once again what comes with that is greater responsibility accountability right comes with that right so we're climbing the ladder of success now don't be afraid of the word success because success is a a kingdom regimen that God has promised to the believer. Success is a kingdom opportunity awaiting the faithful. So when we are faithful in little, God makes us faithful in much. I need to go to Joshua 1 and 8 to study the the principles Mm -hmm. of success because God taught Joshua uh, how to step into an elevation he had never stepped into before. Mm -hmm. He was there with Moses, following Moses, obeying Moses, ministering to Moses, increasing in knowledge, increasing in experience. Moses dies and God calls Joshua up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know that's bothering him because he's never done this job before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some people out here that we're talking to, you're going to be elevated to do something you've never done before. And it's going to bring more responsibility, more accountability, but ladies and gentlemen, more reward. Absolutely. So, so let's look at this thing um, uh, that God was doing with Joshua, because when Moses died, he called Joshua to take his place. So in the eighth verse, he's telling him, excuse me, how to be a success. President, can you read that verse? It says, the book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all mm. that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So he outlined exactly what to do in order to have success in the kingdom. And so it is not like the world. The world don't do anything like kingdom, like like like, like we do in the in the kingdom. So I love the way he d- described it. He laid it out. He said, in order you for you to be a success, because success is waiting for the faithful. And he says, once again, Joshua 1 8, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Therein mean what? In the word that thou may observe to do to do all that is written therein in other words in order for you to observe to do you got to be in the word and if you're in the word you will have be able to do what's in the word because you know what is the word and then it says for then thou shall make thy way prosperous and then thy shall have good success. So, so you got to bring to to the table this that he said you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to do it. He said, "I've given you my word. I've given you this. See, there's enough power in the word to make it come to pass as you function in in your life." Yeah. So, so God's word is powerful in helping the believer climb the ladder of success. 
you know, matter of fact, I was talking to someone the other night and they had a powerful testimony and they was going through some things. And they said that as you begin to minister uh, on that thing, it it be really begin to break some things down in their in, in their lives. It began to really open up some things and break down some, some mindsets and give them a whole new perspective. And it brought a elevation to their thinking. Mm. As you begin to preach the word, they said that they felt a shift begin to take wow. place in their life just by you teaching that word precept yeah. upon precept and they said that it became uncovered they got revelation of it they had a whole different perspective on it and they knew that they was going to be okay they knew that they was yeah. going to make it because the power of the word the power that's in the word is able to break the chain yeah, yeah. and she said just sitting there she said i wasn't even at church she said i was looking at on the monitor she said but the anointing was on the word so much that it just completely broke some things off of well, my mind and is, off of my life. The power of God unto those that believe. Yeah. You got to grab that. The gospel is the power of God unto those that believe. Yes. Now, this is what God is teaching Joshua, how to have success in his new elevation. Mm -hmm. If you listen to me, no matter where you are in life, where you are in business, where you are in the comfort world, we teach you mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. to acquire success mm -hmm. on a new level. Yes. You're going to yes. go from present to the next level. Mm. So he's, he says, Pastor Little said, the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. I like the way he said that mm -hmm. because that means the first stage of success is in his knowledge mm -hmm. and use of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Joshua, what do you know about the book of the law? Mm -hmm. What is your knowledge of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I need you to walk in the knowledge that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So since his success is dependent on the revelation of God, he must get that revelation into his heart. Mm -hmm. Don't let this thing get away from you. Keep it in your mouth. Keep it in your mouth. Yeah. Remember, we gave you a revelation on Sunday that what you get in your, if what, when you speak stuff with your mouth, it stays in your head mm -hmm. until it drops down in your heart and then it's filled with life. And then when you speak it out, it begins to work on your behalf or against you according to the content of what you're speaking. Mm -hmm. So then we we are going to be those that focus in on the word of God and continue in the word. So it's the reservoir of the word that we're speaking from and not a, a, a negative experience or a negative emotion. Mm -hmm. So since his success is dependent on the revelation of God, he must get that revelation into his heart. This brings us to the second stage, mm -hmm. uh, which is meditation. Mm -hmm. God's teaching this boy how to operate on a new level. Mm -hmm. First, you got to get into the word because in the word, he's going to show you what's possible for your life. It's going to transform you from the inside. So in order for you to walk that out, you have to know biblical meditation. And Pastor Lynn is going excuse me, share with us what biblical meditation is. Well, number one, uh, meditation consists, number one, of verbalization, which means, verbalization means that I must articulate something out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. I must say something. The next one is visualization, which means that I must see something uh, on the eyes. canvas of my imagination. I use my mentality. I see my eyes. I visualize something. But in order for me to see it, it was my eyes. I got to first see it in my brain. So once I see it in my brain, I can visualize it in my brain. And then it's almost like it begins to be presented and we're able to see it with our eyes. We're yeah. able to have a reference point. It's almost like vision boards. Many times now, uh, that's the reference you know, point. Yeah, that's, that's the reference point. That's the reference the point. vision board. The vision board. So the vision board is something that you have maybe, you know, been talking about. But once you begin to put pictures to it, visualization to it, yeah. you can actually see See it. Now you and, it, it. and it's solidified more so even in your uh, in your subconscious when yeah. you do that. And it drops down internal. Yes, yes, which is the next one, internalization, which yeah. means that it has become a part of me. It has become a part of my nature. It becomes a, a part where uh, a, a me, where I am requiring this thing. It has become a part Can of I me. Some? Me Can and it something? has become one. 
I have visualized and verbalized victory so much and it's now internalized inside mm -hmm. of me mm -hmm. that I won't put up with anything mm -hmm. but victory. Wow. Y'all got that? Mm. So that, that meditation part is what he's showing Joshua. You verbalize this thing. Don't let it stop coming out of your mouth. Mm. Visualize it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I Just like what he did with Abraham, when Abraham couldn't see uh, because he didn't have any children. And God said, look up at the stars. If you can count them, that's how many children wow. you will have. Look at the sand. If you can count the pebbles, that's how many children you will have. So he had a reference to visualize mm. until he internalized the face of children on each one of those stars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he went into repetition because we learned by repetition, continuing in the principle, cause it solidification mm -hmm. for manifestation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and also, I've, I've heard someone say also too, when you're when you're believing God for the ABCs of faith is asking believing and confessing mm -hmm. so those are so you can add that on there too those are the abc's of faith uh, in order for me to walk in faith i've got to add something i got to believe that i receive it and then i've got to confess that very thing okay okay so now operating in these two principles will help you and me with the third stage which is this stage observe to do all that's written in the word of god that promotes prosperity success for your life mm -hmm. when it's not in you and you haven't done your work on meditation to internalize what god said is possible your brain goes in rational form the enemy throws fiery darts and you don't quite embrace that you're supposed to prosper and you're supposed to have success and you have conflict with that right right so you're 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 normally you're going to be willing to accept things less than what God said you can have. That's why you got to meditate that word until it becomes part of your nature to where you, the only thing you're going to accept is what the word says. So meditation is the key that helps a believer to climb the ladder of success. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, why is meditation so critical mm -hmm. to success and prosperity? Mm -hmm. Why? It's a spiritual experience that paints the end result of the promises of God on my heart. Mm -hmm. Now you guys remember the lesson from Sunday. If it gets into my head, it will end up in my heart where it will be infused with life for manifestation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why meditation is so critical for your journey in life. Mm -hmm. It helps to convince your heart these things are possible mm -hmm. for me. So through meditation, I escape the pain of my present by visiting my breathtaking future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, Pastor Linda, you said it. All the, you know, we have reference points. So all visitation uh, uh, must have a reference point. Yeah. So that's why Abraham, he couldn't reference it. He couldn't reference the promise of God, what God had told him. So God said, look up, Abraham. Mm -hmm. He had to have a reference point. What is your reference point? Mm -hmm. The thing that you want to become, you should have that on your vision board. You should have that, uh, 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 you know, uh, centralized somewhere where you're looking at it every day. So it gets in your head and down in your heart and comes out of your mouth on a daily basis. We're going to tell you what you need to be meditating on on a daily basis in just a few minutes. I'm going to have Pastor Nunn to load you up. So through meditation, we rise from unbelief. We cross the threshold of possibilities and enter into the realm of faith and belief. Mm. That's why you meditate the word day and night, because it's going to change your inside mm -hmm. so you can observe to do it. Right, right. It's right. part of you and it comes out as part of your nature. You're the first, not the last. So you're going to be looking for the favor. Right, 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 right. So if I get here to believe, then all things become possible for me. Mm -hmm. That's why meditation in the word of God is so important. Verbalization, confessing the word of God. Mm -hmm. Visualization, finding the story, finding a model, finding a pattern. I can look at 
Uh, and so I can see the thing that I desire. Internalization. Replace the person that have it with my own face and personage. I see myself walking it out so that I won't refuse myself this possibility. And then also, too, I was thinking about, too, when you were saying that many of us is our own witness. Ooh. Because we have experience of faithfulness of God. And so we are our own witness. We can go back and remind ourselves of the faithfulness of God, what he has done in our lives, what he has brought us through, the promises that he has given us, and they have come to pass. You have a reference point in your own in testimony your own life, yeah. and in your own life. And so during those times when your faith is being tried, during those times when it's been tested, it. During those times when you feel like giving up, all you need to do is go to your reservoir of remembrance mm. and remember the faithfulness of God. And that's going to give you the assurance. That's going to give you yeah. the tenacity yeah. to go through, to push through and not give up. Thank God for thank God for the testimonies of others. Yeah. But I thank God for my own testimony because I got a real life testimony yeah. that I have experienced. And you walked out with And God. you walked out. That's why it's so important for you to walk out what you're believing for and not giving up, not giving up because you know, five years from now, one year from now, you're going to need that same experience to remind you of what God's done for you. And that's going to cause you to go over the threshold of what you need to believe God for and cause you not to, you know, not to what, give what, up. One thing we got to remember is that God is not going to change, mm -hmm. but we will change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will turn on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will talk ourselves out of the possibilities because of experiences with others or demonic situations and encroachments. Mm -hmm. And we will talk ourselves out, but God cannot deny himself. Yes. All things are possible uh, with God. All things are possible to him that believe. All things asked in prayer, believing you shall receive. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have mm -hmm. them. So meditation, helps me to get what is possible into my heart yes. and doubt out of my heart. Yes, yes, yes. My yes, God. Yes, yes, yes. Mark 11, 23 says it so very clearly. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed mm -hmm. and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Mm -hmm. So it's so important for me to understand the possibilities of God by reading the word of God, meditating the word of God, yeah. so I can absorb it in my life, mm -hmm. be saturated with me, mm -hmm. and walk in what I believe. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. That's good. That meditation is so incredibly important to your victory. Mm -hmm. So I told you that Pastor Lynn was going to give us six things to meditate on every day. These are things that you must write down now because this is the mandate that's going to help you overcome every situation, press through every stronghold and bring it down, mm -hmm. cause every mountain to be removed. A mountain can be a mountain of debt, a, a mountain mm -hmm. of unbelief, a mountain of doubt, a mountain of irregularities in your relationship, mm -hmm. a mountain of financial uh, 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 disparagement. So you can cause that mountain to be removed if you operate in the principles of his word. So talk to us, Pastor Linda, yes. about the six things to meditate on yes, every yes, day. Yes, and I believe, every day. Yep, and I believe they're ready to put them on there. Number put one on. is meditate on God himself. Mm. Meditate on God himself. Keep God in your, your thought, thought life. life. Number two is meditate on God's word. Mm -hmm. Number three is meditate on the works of God. Uh -huh. Number four is meditate on past victories. Number four is meditate on the promises of God. And number six is meditate on positive 
thoughts for your future. Awesome. That is so awesome. Meditate on God. Meditate on God's word. Yeah. Meditate yeah. on the works of God. Meditate on past victories you've had in God. Meditate on the promises of God. Meditate on positive thoughts for your future. Mm -hmm. The Bible even tells us what to think on. Think mm -hmm. on things that are good, yeah. virtuous, uh, those things that are worthy of praise. Mm -hmm. Because when you meditate them, a man becomes what he thinks. Yeah. Yeah. So there are other things to learn about climbing the ladder. I want to give you a scripture and uh, and uh, we're going to give you some things that you need to ponder and process. First Corinthians three and six says, I planted mm -hmm. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither is he that watered, but God that giveth the increase. You that's why you keep God in your thought life, because it's God that rewards you with all that you have, everything mm -hmm. you have in your hands, mm -hmm. the life, the breath that you have has been given to you by God. Yes. Now he that planted and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Mm -hmm. For we are laborers together with God. Mm -hmm. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation and another builder thereon. But let every man take heed how he build it thereon. Look at, pull out, extract mm -hmm. the revelation from this. We are laborers, but God is the one who rewards. Yeah. He gives the increase. Every man should receive his own reward according to his own labor. Mm -hmm. See, that climbing the ladder thing is so important that we're giving to you because God rewards you not from what you see others do, but from what you do yourself. Mm. So we're laborers together with God. We are his instruments that he's using. Don't refuse him his glory by not operating in his purpose. Mm -hmm. We labor according to the grace of God that is given to each one of us. Mm -hmm. So now I, I wanted to look at this. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to take some words because there's some other words about climbing the ladder that we need to uh, uh, to kind of exegete and mm -hmm. to, to kind of define. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through these words and we're going to kind of highlight them to you so we can give you this download of motivation to climb the ladder mm -hmm. of success mm -hmm. and prosperity mm -hmm. for your life. So, Pastor Linda, let's take one at a time. You take the first word mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to uh, define climbing the ladder. Uh, graduation? Yes. Uh, consistent and persistent mastery of the present moment until I have outgrown that level in my life. And it forces me into a new level of learning and growing and maturing. That is so, so important. <laughs> yes, because it's, but the only way I'm going to do it is through consistency and persistence, being a uh, mastering those until I have outgrown that level in my life and it forces me into a new level of learning and growing and maturing. Now I'm going to say this here. There are some here on tonight that may have outgrown some areas or levels in your life, but you are refusing to go to your next oh, level Lord. because you are afraid, you are afraid of, you know, a, a fear of failure, um, you know, of sabotage. And God has presented a new level to you, but you are afraid to go to that new level. And so therefore you have been stagnated. And when you, and when you become stagnated, you become frustrated. And Ooh. so you've got to realize and recognize have, have God presented an opportunity for me to go to my next level, but because of fear and because of the unknown, I refuse to go to that next level to grow and mature in the next thing that he's calling me to. That's an individual thing. That's something that you just have to explore on your own. That's something that you're just going to have to add, ask the Lord. And so ask him. I believe that that is uh, some of the things that we really need to do this week before next week come in, I think you really need to examine that particular thing. Have I, I, I wrong this, this level that I'm on, but I am refusing to go to the next level because I am in fear. 
Mm, 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 mm. So that that graduation concept is a persistence to master my present moment. I can't be afraid to go after it, to achieve it, to be a, a, an achiever mm -hmm. in my uh, 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 climbing the ladder of success. Because if we continue, we will grow. In order to grow, you have to do several things. Continue in the word. That speaks of your spiritual education. You have to have submission to authority. This speaks of mentoring impartation, and there must be a contribution of your work that you've been called to contribute. Mm -hmm. You cannot have what you are not willing to sow. Mm -hmm. So that's important. So then we go to the next word, which is called hierarchy. This mm -hmm. word is literally defined as a ladder, mm -hmm. hierarchy. Mm -hmm. You go from one stage and level up the ladder to a higher level. It defines mm -hmm. the chain of command mm -hmm. or the pecking order, so mm -hmm. to say, in an organization or even in a family. Mm -hmm. It also speaks of a person's seated position. Wow. That's why we wanted to bring this to you because it's about you. Mm -hmm. We all sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but we function in the earth according to the revelation of that seat. Mm -hmm. What I know about the seat allows me to operate in that capacity. Yes, good. Okay. It's not the strength of the seat, the full strength of the seat that I operate in, but only the basis of my knowledge and belief can I function in the seat. Mm -hmm. I sit in heavenly mm -hmm. places with Christ, and I'm supposed to be sitting in a place of authority, but I'm always in a place of De denigration mm. and i see life yeah. a whole different way yeah so you you see it's according to your perception of the seed mm. the seed is powerful it gives us authority over all the authority of the enemy but if you don't have the knowledge mm. and if you don't believe you're operating uh not in the full power mm. of the seed now Romans again says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Mm -hmm. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. This next word we're going to use is order. So ordering speaks of the proper arrangement of things in a person's life. Mm -hmm. Order. Mm -hmm. Okay. That speaks of the organization that you have applied to your life, mm -hmm. the system you use to keep order in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. Order, ladies and gentlemen, is the absence of chaos, mm -hmm. which leads to confusion and derailment. Mm -hmm. When you eliminate chaos through order, you eliminate confusion out of your life, which is the cloak that the enemy works every evil work to sabotage your success. Mm. All right. Now, let me say something right here with this word order, because many times we think that we have to order other people's life. Oh, Jesus. You do not have to order people's life. All you need to do is order your life. And many times chaos comes when we are trying to do something which we have not been called to do. That's when the confusion come in because we're trying to bring order to somebody else's life. Every and we don't have authority. Right. And we don't have authority. Don't have to do authority it. Over there. So you've got to realize that you have not been called to bring order to someone else's life. I mean, of course, if it's your child and they're under the age of, you know, maybe 18 or 20, you have authority, you, then. then you have authority. Yeah. Otherwise, you do not have authority. You got to realize where lies your authority and where a lot where lies other people authority. authority. Many times we get caught up in taking care of, of other people that we begin to shipwreck our own lives because we are so consumed with taking care of somebody else. Order is the absence of chaos. So you need to find out where is the chaos coming <laughs> in my life? Where is the chaos coming? Is it in my mind or is it coming from me trying to, you know, take care of somebody else that I have not been called to take care of? You are only to, are called to take care of your children. 
when they are young of age, anybody else outside of the age of 18, 21 years old, you do not have the responsibility. That is you their do not have responsibility. The you only have collaboration and yes. conversation. That's good. You are you can only be a mentor, but mm. you can't make their decisions. Mm. You can be a teacher, but you can't force them in operation. Mm -hmm. You see, you can be a coach but you can't do the work for them. Right. It's almost like you can teach them, but you can't learn for them. No. Mm -hmm. So you understand that taking on the weight of another person creates chaos in your own life. Keep order in your life. Now, the next word we want to talk about in climbing the letter is called rank or ranking. Mm -hmm. Understanding one's ability, skills, and talent to perform at a certain level. Mm -hmm. That level is my ranking amongst others in my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. So ranking produces many things. One thing it produces is my place in the company. Mm -hmm. It's the place that I function at, the place they put me, mm -hmm, assign me. Mm -hmm. Ranking produces then status. Right, when I'm right. in my assigned place, uh, how, it's how I am judged, mm -hmm. which gives me access above the lower rankings on the ladder. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in my company, my status speaks highly of where I am in the company and who's under me, who's above me. My level of access I have to have status. That's what ranking does. Ranking produces my standing. This speaks to the availability of opportunity afforded your rank. Mm -hmm. so, so climbing the ladder, you have to remember that you're qualifying by uh, the, the, the last thing we said was that you have to, you have to um, climb that uh, ladder, graduate, uh, by continuing submission to authority and, and making your contribution in 100% excellence so that you can be recognized and your ranking mm -hmm. can be elevated. Mm -hmm. Now, this word scale is something else as well. Mm -hmm. It speaks of the size of a thing. Okay. Scale means how large is it? Mm -hmm. When you look at the scale of something. Right. Scale speaks of our deposit. Mm-hmm. What kind of deposit has God made in you? Mm -hmm. When you use the deposit God has made in you, your deposit, your capacity begins to enlarge itself. Now, also, there's some of you that have a deposit in you, but you don't want to use the deposit that God has put in you. Therefore, your capacity to receive from that particular deposit cannot go any further than what you allow for it to flow out of your willingness. Yeah, to, yeah, to flow out to of. Function so in if it. you want more deposit, you got to use the deposit that that you have. Right. How can you make room for something? Uh, you know, you that's the only way that you can make room for it is that you got to allow it to flow out. Flow out. Flow out of you. You got to use it on behalf of others. Use it on behalf of yeah. the company. Use it on behalf of the kingdom in yeah. order for God to pour more inside of you. Yeah. So, so it produces a scale, which makes you very valuable. And the more you use the scale, the scale, your scale grows, yeah. or we can say your capacity expands because you are using what you have. You are uh -huh. making room for the new. Okay. Yeah. So my scale is how my return is calibrated. Mm -hmm. Y'all better hear me. It is how my harvest is measured. Wow. Okay. This is a good teaching tonight, right. y'all. I hope y'all are listening. Listen, listen. If I have this, this deposit in me and, and this capacity to solve problems, I get paid. Mm -hmm. The bigger the problem I solve, the higher the scale of my return. That's good. Your scale is the mirror reflection of your performance and your output. Mm. The size of your return is balanced to the size of your output or performance. That's good. I don't know what, what it is about Christians. We want to give little, but receive magnanimous, amazing, astonishing returns. Mm -hmm. But we, mm -hmm. we give very little. Yeah. It don't work that way. 
you have to be willing to give your hundred percent. Right. That's when you unleash his mm. abundantly above all you can ask or think mm. or give and it should be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. It's not you giving a, 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 a little percentage mm -hmm. and receiving all that God has said in his word mm -hmm. in a return. Mm -hmm. No, Paul made it very clear. If you give stingily, you receive stingily. Mm -hmm. If you give bountifully, you receive bountifully. Now, and one thing that one great thing about it is, is that I, I don't have to compare my giving to anybody else's giving. That's right. And that goes with anything that goes with financially, that goes with my service, uh, because we are all at various places in our lot. Yeah. A, a woman that, I mean, a mother uh, of, of a four month old or a year old or two year old, uh, her time is very limited. So she only have a certain amount of time that she can give to anything outside of her household. But someone that possibly kids or adults, they're grown, they may or have don't more have time kids. or they're, they may be able to give more than, than the mom that's, you know, that's just where their kids are, are at home. So you can't measure your in your output by somebody else's output. Absolutely. And sometimes we do that. So in the same thing with our giving as well. You can, I mean, you can't compare your giving to anybody else's giving because God has given you a certain amount of money uh, for you to live your life, and you can't compare it to somebody else, and you can't make can't give on their on their level, and you don't need to be in combination, and you don't need to be in fear about it. You know, and, and, and feel, well, I just don't need to give nothing at all because I can't give what other people give. So I'm just not going to give give at all. And many people do that as well yeah. because they feel that they can't measure up to, you know, to somebody else's giving. They feel that their giving is significant. And so I just don't need to give at all. Well, climbing the ladder is all about your personal purpose yeah. and your relationship with God. It's not about you comparison and competing with others yeah. as you climb. Corporate, yes, that's what they do, compete and compare. But in kingdom, mm -hmm. we do not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that our scale, the scale you, you operate on is the tier that you're presently on, the mm -hmm. tier you are operating from. It's graded according to your performance. Mm. Each tier has a certain value attached to it. And in order to have more value and graduate, you have to level up. Mm. You have to climb the ladder. That's good. If you always do what you've always done, you always have what you always had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to go up, you have to give that 100% right where you are. Mm. Every company is watching you. Mm -hmm. And they will not level you up to the next tier mm -hmm. unless they see the balance of your performance on your present level. Mm, that's so good. That's, that's so good. That's so that's good. Everywhere. So for those that say, well, you know what, I'm not working for a company uh, or they may say I have my own company or I have my own ministry that the same thing applies, applies to you, to you as well. Absolutely. When, you, when, when you say, if you don't put all your all okay. into your company, you don't get a return back out of your company. You, you got to measure it according to the scale of return. How much are you willing to put into it? Mm. If you're not willing to put a hundred percent in it, you're not going to get a hundred percent out of it. Mm, that is so good. Yeah, that is. And you, and you know what? And the, and the thing is, too, is how much do you believe in your calling or your purpose? Yeah. How, how much do you believe in it? Yeah. Because if you believe in it, most likely you will be putting a lot in it. Yeah. If you don't believe in it or you belittle what God has put in you, most likely you are not going to be putting a lot in it. Right. So that's kind of maybe a question that we need to ask it's ourselves, ourselves, especially when we feel like we're stagnated in life. We may need to ask ourselves, you know what? How much do I believe in this vision that God has given me? How? And if I believe it, what type of steps then am I going to take to see multiplication in me expand in my capacity? To receive more this kind of lesson goes across the board it's kingdom it's also yeah. uh concerning secular place uh, uh careers mm -hmm. and things of that nature mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so it's so very important that you and I understand uh, that we graduate according to our consistent performance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, that's kingdom. And that is also in the secular uh, corporate place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, Pastor Linda, I think we're going to end it right there. It's already 24 after. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We've had a good night tonight. Um, I tell you, these uh, training camps are totally amazing. Um, you, these are the ones that you probably need to go back and listen to them to make sure you absorb everything that was said. Uh, cause I always say that many times you can hear one thing, um, you know, one, I listened to it one time, but you can go back and listen to it and hear something totally, totally different, get a fresh revelation on something totally different. So I encourage you to go back. This was a really deep night tonight. Um, yeah, I think Pastor Bell said something about promotion. Uh, this teaching is preparing us for promotion motion and it surely 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 is so i encourage you to go back listen to this again take notes do whatever you need to do because uh, you don't want to miss this train and that is right mm -hmm. okay well pass on to what we're going to do now all right well it's uh giving time now it is giving time it's an opportunity now for us to give into the kingdom this is time now to show god how much we trust him in the area of our, our finances and our devotion to him uh for him to 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 bless us and return back to us uh monetary uh gain but not only a monetary gain but it's favor also there so yeah. there are things that that uh you receive by giving into the kingdom of god as many times it's not all about money it's about favor it's about promotion yeah. and wisdom it, insight yeah yeah, it's, it, yeah. yeah so it you know it, it you know it, it includes a whole whole lot and when you, so when we you don't pour into the kingdom of god he promises to yeah. do things on your behalf, yeah. which you need in your life. Right. So somebody needs favor more than finance. Yeah. Somebody needs wisdom mm -hmm. on how to apply the knowledge that they have. Yeah. 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 Somebody needs an open door. Somebody needs um, the mm -hmm. insight on yeah. a certain situation. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So go ahead and avail yourself to the giving moment. Of course, there's the way that you can give easy, fast and secure. Uh, take a few moments before we sign off tonight uh, to go ahead and, uh, and to give into the in, into the kingdom. Um, all right. Anybody, while you're doing that, we'll take maybe one or two people. If you just have a uh, aha moment on tonight, uh, go ahead and pin that in the comment section. Uh, if the word bless you tonight, go ahead and say that. If you had an aha moment, a, a mind shift, uh, you know, if you want to share that testimony, go ahead and do that. And let us know. Uh, if the class was a blessing to you on tonight, we would love to hear the impact uh, that is having on you. All right. All right. All right. Let's see what if I say thank you for the notes too. Yep. Yep. It was some uh, great notes that, uh, and I think, yeah. So I think you guys get, get those great notes. I think you get them on Sunday as well. Right. I think, uh, I think some notes come along on Sunday too. Of right. course you go in all different directions on Sunday. Uh, so yeah, you may not get all the notes on Sunday, but yeah, yeah. It was a great lesson for sure on tonight. Amen. For sure. For sure. Amen. All right. So you guys go ahead and give um, on tonight. And uh, don't forget all about the announcements. Of course, the uh, the affirmation service we gave you, uh, uh, the uh, confirmation service we gave you some information on that. All you need to do is go to the lpccglobal.com just to stay in the know. We're constantly changing and updating information as, as things come in. That way we can always keep you in the know of what's going on. All right, you guys, we are getting ready to sign off. As soon as we sign off, we want you to, uh, if you're able to just uh, keep your computer on for a few moments, and just as a reminder of all the uh, upcoming events that we have here at LPCC. Until we see you again, be blessed. Be blessed. The favor of God be on you. Stay tuned for the announcements.